What's up, Facebook Livers? We are filming the debut episode of Pick Rich's Brain live from Crash Studio here in Nashville, Tennessee, because I get so many questions. Drummer, percussionist, author, composer, songwriter, producer, professional speaker, actor, Rich Redmond has left his mark on thousands of songs, including over 21 number one hits, over 30 years of been there, done that, wisdom and knowledge in the Nashville music business. This is Pick Rich's Brain. I'm here with my good buddy Jim McCarthy from Jim McCarthy Voiceovers. Mm -hmm. uh, Jim was actually the guy that got me. Well, I was always into voiceover. I really wanted. To, it was like a career fantasy. Everyone has a career fantasy, like you know, being the, shir the shirtless saxophone player on the beach or being a sitcom actor. But I also wanted to do some voiceover, and he's fantastic. So we met for lunch a decade ago, and here we are. We're still living. We're up, still above dirt. But you're going to see uh, this kind of warts and all thing because we're actually going to be filming an actual episode on a high quality camera that's going to be archived and we're going to be able to trickle the content out to all the socials. And the reason why we're doing this is because for the last 15 years, people are always asking me via the socials, how do, what do I do when I move to Nashville? Should I, when should I move? How do I know I'm ready? Uh, what are the things that I should expect when I get there? And then of course, just drumming related things like what kind of paddles do you use? And what, what is that sim felt pad thing that you use? And what size, you know, what do you use on your bottom? Like kind of nerdy drum stuff. I guess we can address some of that stuff too. It's not my favorite thing to talk about because I'm not a gear guy. I love gear, but I'm not a widget guy or like a toy guy. So, but anyways, we're gonna have a good time. And when should we start, Jim? Jim's gonna be feeding me questions. Yes. Is anybody uh, pi piping in here that we should address here? Uh, like, like I could read that far. Like I. <laughs> it's a lot of comments are popping up, but one of the things we got to talk about is the. Can everybody hear Jim? Whole enchilada. Oh, the whole enchilada. So people are asking me, what is this drumming in the modern world thing? It's uh, drumminginthemodernworld.com. You could pull it up right now on your other device as we're interacting. Are we rolling the cannon too? Yeah. Okay, we are. we're rolling. We're rolling. Good. We're rolling. Okay, yeah, so check out drumminginthemodernworld.com. What is it? It's me um, looking for an honest consumer because I'm basically allowing you to download six and a half hours of educational material. What is this educational material? Well, it was such a huge project, I have to kind of remind myself, but the whole enchilada is basically the most affordable package at drumminginthemodernworld.com. What do I do on this? Well, first of all, it was... The product was directed and co-produced by my good buddy Eric Doris, who directed and co-produced Todd Zuckerman's award-winning DVDs. So DVDs have died. Macs don't even come with DVD drives anymore. This is the last Mac that has a DVD drive. So I wanted to keep up with technology and just have it be a download. And since it's a downloadable product, I, we're avoiding compression. So you can basically just download this thing with high, high quality audio and seven camera angles, including a robotic jib. I think that production wise really made the difference. But basically, I verbally explain all the Jason Aldean hits, 12 Jason Aldean number one songs, and I perform them seven camera angles. Then there's also performances with artists I've worked with over the years in Nashville. Artists like Doc Walker, John Eddy, Rick Orozco, Rocket Queen, The Stellas, and on and on and on. And then there's lessons. These are super informative lessons that other drummers are not talking about. I wanted to be the first on the scene to represent the city of Nashville and the, and the music that comes from this historic city by talking about click tracks, playing along with loops, cheat chart creations, the Nashville number system, overdubbing percussion, the money beats, different styles drummers should know how to play, rock, country, pop, Latin, fusion, reading music, rudiments, playing in a rhythm section, tuning drums, insights on touring. There's interviews, I actually interview industry leaders. That's actually coming for some free content because I've interviewed some really amazing key players in the Nashville environment. And just behind the scenes, how the Nashville studio environment actually works and what's it, what it's actually like on a recording session. So it's all there. And you could download this stuff. You why could somebody, own it. Why would somebody buy it? Why would somebody buy this? Because most drum DVDs are just now, of course, I do 20 drum solos that have quirky, fun little titles that were just very off the cuff and in the moment. And those are fun. It's a fun takeaway. If you can steal some licks from me, believe me, I stole licks from everybody for the last 40 years. But if you can steal some licks from me, that's great. But that's not the focus. The focus on this package is if you want to truly Take your skill set and make a go of it. Swim with the sharks, blood is in the water. You move to three cities. You move to New York City. You move to Los Angeles. You move to Nashville, Tennessee. And let me tell you, 
everyone's moving to Nashville, te te everyone's moving to Nashville, Tennessee. And the the people that I teach at what I talk to people at the University of North Texas and the Berkeleys and the University of Miami's and the kids that are graduating from the music from Musicians Institute, they're all moving to Nashville. This used to be guitar town and now it's drum town. Literally every valet, barista, waiter in town is a drummer, <laughs> which is fine. So you're gonna have to figure out how to compete with these new faces and obviously being prepared is fantastic, but my 20 years, I'm about to celebrate 20 years in Nashville, I basically just eviscerated myself and I put all this information. There's a section of the product called Rich's Gems of Wisdom. And so I'm basically just opening up my heart and soul and just sharing all this information that has come to me the hard way by getting up every day, showing up with a smile on my face, being open to new experiences and being able to take direction with a smile on my face, having good sounding gear, showing up on time, interacting, and just yeah showing up showing up ready to execute so you can have this stuff it's uh 149.99 usually but to celebrate valentine's day and love for the whole month of february you can get the whole enchilada for 99 dollars. now if that's too steep for you um i totally understand that uh you can also download 120 mini movies that are all in the whole enchilada a la carte much like itunes and this thing is that for 99 bucks you get the whole entire thing. You get the whole entire thing. Also, if you if you like a cinematic experience or you like the, we kind of tipped our hat to the DVD style, which is what we call our chapters. And the chapters are all broken down into price points and there's nine of those. So there's different ways you can consume this information. You could download, look at the titles and you can just download lessons or gems of wisdom or Aldine deconstructions or song performances or drum solos all in little mini movie format. You can digest them in nine chapters and there's descriptions of all those products or you can just get the whole enchilada. Da da. So basically they could either pay you $150 for an hour of your time for one hour yes. to, to basically go over and, and pick your brain on having a mentor and what they need to know to move to Nashville or spend a hundred bucks one time and have it over and over again. Yeah, this is my good friend, uh, Jim McCarthy off camera here. Jim McCarthy voiceovers, longtime friends. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I do, I do consultations and life coaching and drum lessons. And yes, the price point is $150. And that comes from 40 years of playing an instrument, 20 years in one of the most difficult industries on the planet so I'm offering you harder and information now that's one hour of my time or you can just go and just buy the whole enchilada and you can watch over and over and over and over and there's other fun things that happen with this product like there's two snare drum solos so if you're a drum student and you're in the eighth grade or you're in high school or you want to warm up on something and you're in college or you want to do a recital piece I have two uh, snare drum solos one is written in a concert style and one is written in a marching drum style and I even have a lesson in the product where I apply the marching snare drum solo to the drum set and who was somebody that used rudiments in such a beautiful way on the drum set, Steve Gadd, one of the most recorded drummers of all times. So if you're a drummer and you don't know how to read music and you can't play a march and you can't play different styles and you don't know about the Nashville number system and you've never played with a click track, you need to get busy. And this product can definitely help you. So, um, YouTube, I'm, I'm, YouTube. Next oh yeah. Month of March, we're doing what? The big old promotion. Like you and subscribe on YouTube. What can you win at the end of the month of March? Oh yeah, what are we giving away? We're giving away, so I hope everybody heard my 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 best buddy, my, uh, G, uh, my Ed McMahon, uh, Jim McCarthy over there, Jim McCarthy voiceovers. Yeah, for the month of March, Go to my YouTube page, like my YouTube page, subscribe to my YouTube page, and we will uh, keep, keep tabs on everybody, and you're going to win a brick of my Promark Active Grip 595 Signature Rich Redmond Drumsticks. And people say, how long did it take to create this product? I said, four and a half years. Going back and forth with my buddy Marco Socoli, everybody, hey, the grappa man, everybody knows Marco. But four years trying to come up with the perfect weight, the perfect color, the perfect finish, the, the abrupt taper, the size of the, I'll call it a nipple or the acorn right there, right? And then just making sure that we can twirl them in a super sexy way. Yeah, four years, but really 46 years on planet earth my signature drumsticks you can get these anywhere in any brick and mortar on the planet um forks drum closet in nashville tennessee you can also get them online sam ash musician's friend gg all that stuff sweetwater you can get these but if you like my youtube page you're going to be entered in a chance to win this 
product, a brick of this product, which is a brick is like 10 pairs or 12 pairs or something like that. So um, yeah, uh, I think you're gonna like this. There's a lot of positive feedback on this drumstick because it's a versatile drumstick. It looks sexy. It's my two favorite colors. Um, it, you're, it's actually got a proprietary finish. So as you're playing, ding, 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 or bing, la, bing, la, in front of a big audience in the summer, your body temperature rises and then the sticks get tacky. Much like me after several Irish coffees, I get a little tacky, but that's, this is that. You're gonna have, and, and then why do you want to go to my YouTube page? Well, you're gonna, why do I want you to go to my YouTube page? Well, it's just information for you. I took 10 years of my life, that's over two presidencies. Maybe it's been 12, I think, I think it's 12 years. I don't know. I got on YouTube really, really early, and I've always put up a, I first started out with a, with a small Canon recorder, and then I went to a Zoom, and then I went to a Flip, and then now I'm on the, the GoPro, but basically I just, put up my, a GoPro around my drums and you could have that same experience of sitting in that driver's seat playing. There's fire, there's combustion, there's lasers, there's smoke, there's 80,000 people in a in a football stadium. So uh, that's a, that's just a, my way of saying, here, experience this and use it. you can use it to motivate you if that's one of your goals. There's also behind the scenes information on how to navigate the music business. There's lessons, uh, so much on my YouTube channel. I think there's around 350 videos on there. So at youtube.com forward slash Rich Redmond, that's R-E-D-M-O-N-D. -E so we'd love for you to stop by, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and, and get some drumsticks. Yeah. yeah, I'm proud to say that a lot of your uh, more high-performing high videos were ones that I made. Yeah, Jim McCarthy is the, it's, Jim McCarthy is actually the, the cameraman and the, the brains and the editor behind a lot of my videos that you guys have liked a lot on YouTube, including uh, one that's very popular um, is the... Um, the tour of the, the drum set walk around, which is kind of like empty cribs. It's like jump drum set cribs, and so that was a couple years ago. But we'll probably, you know, start, we'll do that again for this tour. One yeah, we'll do another one because this year, I what am I playing? This year, I'm playing a standard configuration DW collector series in a black sparkle finish with a white satin hardware, which I think is one of the most best looking, most masculine drum sets I've ever owned in my life. So I'm t I, it's, And it sounds so good. And so we're taking that out on the road again this year, doing 55 shows with Jason Aldean. I'm sure some of those dates are at uh, jasonaldean.com, A-L-D-E-A-N.com. So we're having fun here in Crash Studio. So we're going to start taking some photos, some, some questions, so we can film this episode of Pick Rich's Brain. And if you, uh, you think you might be tuning in on a regular basis for Pick Rich's Brain, the hashtag is Pick Rich is brain with no apostrophe on riches. Right. Jim, what do we got, man? We got Jeremy Chambers. He asked, uh, I actually was sifting through some of your messages, and we have a theme going today. A lot of people are wondering what they need to know before they move to Nashville. Uh, would being a union musician help you at all in Nashville? That's question one. Jeremy Chambers. Or should I just come down, come to town and meet people? What is, in your opinion, is the best way to succeed and not end up a bar band drummer for the rest of my life? Jeremy Chambers, Pekin, Indiana. Nice. Jeremy Chambers, thanks for the question, buddy. Uh, great question. The question is, should he join the union when he moves to town? And of course, I'm sure all of my musician and friends and solidarity that are members of the union are watching me and they're very carefully how I'm going to answer this question. But I will tell you this. I've been a, uh, a member of the American Federation of Musicians since 1993, if not early. It's a long, long time. There was maybe a couple periods where I had a lapse in my membership where maybe things were tough. Maybe, I was, maybe it was a time I was in a signed band and I was donating plasma and selling all my clothes and all my my Xbox video so I could pay the rent, which is another story altogether. But uh, yes, it is a very cool, it's a cool kids club. The union has your back. So let's just say I play on a song. It ends up on a film score that gets distributed to all the red box outlets, or, and then it becomes huge in China. If there's no union paperwork, I'm paid my one time, and that's it. Now, if there's paperwork that's filed with the union, there's full-time jobs of people sitting in offices that have my back that go, whoa, this was just picked up by a production company in China, oh, in South America, and they go after your money. You could also get affordable health care for the union and instrument insurance. Now, instrument insurance is really hard to find, and through the union, they have a company called Marsh Affiliates, which will basically cover your instrument 24-7, 365, anywhere from anything. You're, you are covered from theft with your instrument anywhere on planet Earth. The only thing that it doesn't cover is nuclear war and a locust tax. And 
and then that is in the the verbiage on the so I've always had my instruments insured through the union so it is a good thing yes if you're if you are living paycheck to paycheck and you are chasing the music dream it might be a little too expensive for you to join maybe you can hold off a little bit but keep that in your sight line of something that you want to accomplish you want to be a member of that now Tennessee is a right to work state so you don't necessarily have to be a, a member but I would say do it do it as soon as you can I did it my first day in town I moved to Nashville at 10 a.m. and my dad drove me here in a pickup truck with my cat and one set of drums and we drove over to the union and we signed me I got signed up um, but if you're on a if you're on a budget the name of the game is meeting people people make the world go round you can't know enough people but most importantly people need to know you so when they think somebody thinks I need a drummer for this demo session I need a drummer for this recording date I need a drummer for this showcase I need a drummer for this tour your name needs to come up on that list and it does not happen easily and you know what the bar band thing yeah you're gonna be in a bar band in Nashville I still go and play in bars it's because I like playing my instrument and I'm passionate about my art form so it doesn't matter who if I'm playing for 80,000 people I will still go and play djembe or cajon for eight people and it's because music makes me happy something always good happens from doing something like that you will always meet somebody you will always connect to it uh, connect a dot on a new opportunity so sometimes you have to take what I consider a step back to take a step forward so when I left Dallas Texas and I was playing in big bands and show bands I was backing up Phyllis Diller for for a week of behind uh, at a play and I backed up the original um, late the uh, Tonight Show Steve Allen you know playing with a big band and I would play on McDonald's jingles and I was teaching in the public schools and I was teaching privately and I was playing with the most badass top 40 band every Thursday Friday Saturday night and doing big band gigs and playing in churches remember Robert Tilton the guy that talked in tongues like I played in his church church band I did everything so when I came to Nashville I didn't necessarily want to do that stuff again but I did because there was a whole new group of people that had needed to learn who I was and I needed to connect the dots and so God forbid you might have to go down to lower Broadway and play those play those bars I did I've played every nightclub in Nashville and there's nightclubs that don't exist there anymore because we had a tornado in 1998 and it knocked down some of the buildings but you know what people love their honky-tonks so we keep rebuilding but what bad things would come from you actually playing down on lower broadway nothing you're going to meet people you're going to work on your craft you're going to be seen you're advertising your product which is your playing and your personality and you being a professional entity so i hear about people not wanting to do that and great if you can move to nashville and get a gig right away and not have to work a day job and and get a tour but it's usually not going to happen that quickly it's a it's a five-year town at the average time to get connected is five years and that's meeting enough people that know who you are to not have to work a day job did i work a day job when i moved to nashville you better believe it i parked cars i was a waiter I did light construction and uh, I worked for a temp agency, data entry, making copies, um, and I was a substitute teacher, K through three. And so I would play into the nightclubs until three in the morning and then I would be in the classroom teaching at 7 a.m. So really you just have to decide how bad you want it. It was a little bit of a tangent, but yes, union membership is something to strive for. Do it as soon as you possibly can because there's a group of musicians that are in the union and there's a group of musicians that are not in the union. And you know what? I want to be invited to both parties uh, how did you know in Dallas that you had what it took to make it in Nashville and that's not a question from anybody I think that's a pretty good question when did you know it was time I knew it's the question is like when how did I know it was time to move and I'll tell you this I went to the University of North Texas it's a famed institution if you've seen the movie whiplash I swear the movie is loosely based on on our experiences at the University of North Texas but it was such a, uh, a period of extreme growth in my life I was there I chasing a master's degree so I have my master's degree in music education and I would just say m music education classical percussion and jazz percussion because those are the things I focused on um, but yeah, all my colleagues that I was in school with, I was in school with Blair Sinta that went on to play with uh, Melissa Etheridge and uh, Alanis Morissette and of course the great Keith Carlock, you know, I used to sub for Keith all the time and now Keith lives in New York and Nashville. I knew he would change the drumming world. Uh, my friend Rob of Sharian, uh, Luke Adams, uh, Jason, I had just missed, missed Jason Sutter. He was going to get his, graduated to go to the University of Miami and get his master's. And of course our, our fantastic buddy Jim Riley, we moved to Nashville the same week. Ooh, I got a decline 
decline a call here. We're going to decline that. Sorry if one of you guys is calling me. I wonder if that kicks us off the live. Nope. nope. Okay. Um, yeah, so I knew I was time to go because we. what happens is, oh, my buddy Adam Gust, he's a killer uh, Angelino drummer. Uh, we were all kicking around out. Craig Pilo, too, with Frankie uh, Frankie Valley and doing that whole thing. He's He was a North Texas guy. So many great colleagues. And everybody was moving to New York or L.A. And I was still kind of kicking around just like, well, maybe I should save enough money to go so I can afford this or this or that. And I do recommend that. If you can't save five, ten grand before you move, you'll have a better experience. Um, you won't be so desperate. People kind of can smell desperation. And uh, But I just, yeah, everybody had moved on. So I said, oh, my God, I've got to give my band two-week notice and get out of here. But it came in a real way, and it came by asking. I asked around, if you want something, and uh, enlist the, 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 the help of your friends. So I just asked around, hey, do you know anybody who's looking for a drummer, like on a national level? And a friend of mine, Dan Nelson, said, there's this girl named Trisha Yearwood that's looking for a drummer. So I sent my tape in and I got into the call list to go audition for Trisha Yearwood. That audition turned into an audition for Dina Carter a week, a week later, and then that audition turned into an opportunity to audition for Barbara Mandrell. So I had auditioned for three national recording artists in three weeks, and I was getting great feedback from the people that um, I was auditioning with and their rhythm sections and their team. So I said, you know what? As sexy as Los Angeles is at this particular time in my life, I don't know anyone there. But there's all sorts of people that are reacting in a positive way to what I'm doing in Nashville. So I went back to Dallas. I was playing in an awesome band called Random Access. What's up, Random Access guys? And I gave them two weeks notice and it was in, uh, it was a good, I will say it was the best decision of my life because you really have to be where the action is to, yeah, you gotta swim with the sharks. And so you have, it's like, a, it's like owning a restaurant. Location is everything. So those three cities, and I chose Nashville. And what did Nashville teach me? For the most part, Nashville taught me how to play for the song and stay out of the way and try to, when I play, paint the Mona Lisa, but at the same time, just kind of stay out of the way and make it about that vocal. Because let's face it, if you want to be in a solo band, great, move to you know Europe or Japan and, and maybe you can put a band together and eke out a living just making creative music. I love that. I think everybody should have a creative project on the side. I'm going to do a solo record this year, a rock instrumental solo record this year because it's just time in my career to do that. But for the most part, I make a living backing up singers. And that's where 99% of the work is, is backing up somebody singing a song about love, loss, lust, you know, the human story. Dirt roads. Yeah. Cornfields. Yeah. Um, that's actually L.A. Ornelia's uh, kind of address that. Do you have to live in Nashville to be successful in what you do, like record, tour, etc.? Well, people can record now from their bedrooms. I mean, this is my studio here in Nashville is a is a bonus room. This house was built in 1992, and um, I put Oralex on the walls, and I've got the uh, pr the the totally prerequisite uh, Asian rugs, and I got a couple different drum sets on here, and microphones, and you go into your, the DAW of your choice, and you are making music. But now, how are you going to get the clients? How are you going to establish those relationships with the people that are going to hire you to actually record from your place? That's by going to where the action is. Um, so yes, I really do feel like there's secondary markets. You know, there's your Austins and your Miamis and your Chicagos. But uh, for the most part, um, this is Music City. This is where the action is right now. This is where live musicians are still recording in the same room at the same time. People ask us how we do the Aldine records. And I say, yeah, it's eight people in one room recording at the same time. And so many records are just piecemeal. piecemeal now you've got the drummer recording for a week with a big producer you have a bass player doing bass week and then guitars it's like no we're all for the most part i hope it doesn't change but doing things together it's a uh, music is a team sport it really is it's all about kind of community but uh you know you really have to decide what you want to do and some people get crazy about their age like i'm in my 40s and like well yeah what, what's going on in your life uh, uh well my kids are grown they're out of the house i'm on my second marriage like can you sell your house can your wife work from nashville I mean, this, you don't want to be a member of the woulda, coulda, shoulda club. I don't want that on my tombstone. Everything that the universe tells me to do, I chase it down. Like, I take massive action right away. And if you don't put a date on the book, if you're thinking about moving to Nashville, if you don't put a date on the book, you're not going to do it. There's never a good time. There's always another baby coming. The, the fence needs a, we got a refi. Oh, work. my car broke down. Wow, wow, wow. You've got to put a date on the calendar and make it happen.
happen. Take massive action. You know, um, the things that I'm doing on the West Coast, talk about bravery. You know, I'm competing with some of the best people that do what they do in the world, and that's exactly where I want to be. So I hope that helps. Right on. Lou Calderola from uh, Lou. New York, Connecticut. Uh, best way to network as a drummer to get your name around to players and positions that may not only be in your home area. Hmm. Or you're just getting ahead of it. Oh, so the question is kind of like, how do you network with other musicians? I just think just like being where musicians are. I mean, musicians are just such communal beings. You know, we're in the arts. We're creative. You know, you get drummers. You know, I'm a member of the uh, the 818 Drummers Club. You know, we get together at a you know a, a you know a place in the Woodland Hills, and we have all the best working drummers in that area getting together over lunch, you know, breaking bread. You know, and it takes three hours. They have to kick us out of the place. They give us our own room in the back. And I know there's a, that there's a gathering in Nashville on, I believe it's the first Wednesday of every month. I've never here for whatever reason. Um, but going to where other drummers are, because that's great, because other drummers can recommend each other for things. They can pat each other's back. It's a great sense of community. But know this. The work that you're going to get a, as a drummer is going to come from producers, songwriters, artists, bands, other instrumentalists, band leaders. So you can't know enough people bass players, you can't know enough keyboard players, you can't know enough gatekeepers, you, and you never know where, where a job is going to come from. If somebody, you're playing is an expectation. Playing at a high level is an expectation, but the other things, the soft skills, your, your personality, your bedside manner, how you interact with others, your ability to take direction and all that kind of stuff is paramount. That is what is makes the difference between you having a job, keeping a job, or not having a job. Some of those, some of those skills. So I do the same thing. You know, when I'm in Los Angeles, I'm always out at events. I do the jam at the Viper. I do the jam at the Soundcheck Live. I do the jam at the at the Whiskey. Um, and I just, I just have a great time interacting with other musicians. I'm a social person. If you're a social uh, butterfly, it, it definitely helps if you're an outgoing person. Uh, at the same time, there's people that are hyper successful, uber successful, that are introverts, and they let their playing speak for themselves. I just try to cover both bases. Play your ass off always, like it's the last time you're ever gonna play. Doesn't matter if it's five people, 500, 5,000, 25,000. Play the same way, play with the same level of passion and commitment, and people will appreciate you and they'll ask for your number. And then you go and you do a great job on that. And then good news travels fast, it really does. But not as fast as bad news, you know, so you can't you can't burn a bridge. Um, you know, these jams I do sometimes on the West Coast, I'll get uh, my friend Matt will call me and be like, hey, you're playing Meatloaf tonight, it's a 13 minute song. So I go and I transcribe the part, I put a little chart together that I tape to my bass drum, if there's a music stand, I'll put it on there and my goal is to nail that thing and drive the band and lead and follow at the same time and make it a super fun experience for everybody and then entertain to the audience as well, all at the same time. Talk about multitasking. Drummers are great multitaskers. And then the phone call comes in, ah, singer's sick. So what did I get out of that experience? Well, I worked on my craft, I worked on sharding, you know, and then uh, another fellow says, hey, let's do, it's disco night. We're gonna do a disco song. And they, and they send me an MP3 of the song and I chart it all out. An hour later, singer's sick. We're doing something else. Like, okay, well, what else are we doing? We're doing such and such songs. So, okay, I'm fighting traffic in LA, pull the car over, I get the, I do my little chart, all right? And I go to the gig and I am prepared. Be prepared. There is nothing uh, sexy about going and winging a gig, where there's, especially if it's a Tom Petty song and there's three chords and you don't know the changes. If you're gonna get up and play a song with me and you don't know the three chords, the free falling, there's a problem. And you made me sound bad. So be, be prepared at all times, no matter how big or little the gigs. Because let me, let's face it, the little gigs turn into big gigs. What are the things that someone new to town can really do to uh, kill their chances? Are you, are you noticing any sort of um, things that people won't do? And it's like, well, why aren't you doing them? You know, someone new to town, well, I'm not going to do that. Oh, there's, only, there's a lot of kids that are saying that they're not going to move, they're not going to play on lower Broadway. And it's, I don't want to blame it on millennials, but, you know, hey, maybe they got to figure it out, Jim. Maybe it's a thing where um, they have a hyper focus and a laser focus to do a specific thing and the power of the mind and the follow through and connecting the right dots. And maybe they save their $5,000, which is super smart and they don't need to do that. I just feel like, 
there's a, such a wide world of things to do here in Nashville, cover all those things. I, I did those free demo sessions and those free showcases and backed up chick singers in the coffee houses and then played on Lower Broadway, all the rooms. And, and each one of those rooms has a different personality. You're gonna have a different set list with different bands at Roberts as opposed to Layla's, as opposed to the stage, as opposed to Legends and getting to know those band leaders and going out and sitting in and playing your butt off and recording yourself and connected the dots with people. And then and then when, once I got connected enough um, to not have to play Laura Broadway, I never went back. I never went back. And when you're 22 or 25, it's worth doing. It really is. Is there anything you want to know about voiceover? Does anybody want to know anything about voiceover? <laughs> voiceover and Jim has got a, he does you know he does the monster trucks thing he does the he does the hard sell he does the soft sell um, yeah Christopher Walken occasionally he, yeah he does Christopher Walken impersonations Cody Ellinger uh, says I'm a 19 year old drummer in Texas and I'm having trouble putting my name out there what advice do you have on that? Just play, it's Cody? Cody. Cody, just play, 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 play from the heart, it will set you apart. Show up prepared, show up beyond prepared. When I did the audition for Trisha and Dina and everybody, they said learn five songs, I learned the catalog. I learned their catalog. And um, you know, I'll see those people around backstage or whatever and well, I'll, get the, I'll get the nod like, I remember you, dude. Thanks for learning my material. It just shows respect to the person that's hiring you. It shows respect to the person that's hiring you that you value um, them as an artist enough to sit down and real truly prepare for something. But yeah, getting your name out there is and is fantastic, man. You're 19 years old. That's a fantastic man. You could you could um, play around Texas for another three years, save some money, and then move to move to a town, another another city where there's. Um, I don't want my Texas people to get mad at me, but because I, I mean I grew up in El Paso, Texas. I went to school at Texas Tech University. I got my master's at the University of North Texas. I moved into Dallas, Texas. Loved it, was a big part of that scene there. And um, now I'm about to celebrate 20 years in Nashville and for the last five years going to Los Angeles. And now I have a place in Los Angeles and I'm part of the music scene of two cities. I, and, and that's from the sweat of my brow. That's not relying on anybody to help me with anything. Of course I ask for help. If you want help, ask for help. But then when somebody helps you and they open a door for you, you have got to knock it out of the ballpark. Because if somebody agrees goes and puts their neck on the line for you and you show up and you're unprepared you make the other person look bad and I would never like to do that they'll put your head in a vice you know Randy Perdue asks I know Randy explain your crash course to the folks oh thanks Randy so I got an email from Randy last night he's hosted a master class for me um, and uh, yeah the crash course of success if you guys want to go to crash course for f o r crash course for success.com explains it all there's testimonials from clients there's videos. Uh, but basically, it's a high energy uh, one hour edutainment event. And I get hired a lot by corporate America to open or close events. We're talking Microsoft, Cisco, Johnson & Johnson, Hewlett Packard. Um, and, and it's a unique event. It's a unique event where Crash is my platform. And what is Crash? It's an acronym. It stands for Commitment, Relationships, Attitude, Skill, and Hunger. And these are five things that anyone from any walk of life can use to be more successful and have more success in their personal or professional craft and their personal and professional lives. So it's definitely something you can do using drumming, committing to your craft, putting in those tens of thousands of hours, um, committing to move to a city like Nashville or Los Angeles. Uh, relationships, cultivating mutually beneficial lifelong relationships with people and your attitude. And we talk about attitude, how it's 99.9% .9 of life. People will always remember how you treated them and how you made them feel and enthusiasm is, a cont is contagious. And then skill developing the skill sets you need to be successful in your chosen field. So if you want to come to Nashville and you want to be a successful drummer, well then probably reading music, playing styles, playing with a click, being able to create loops, overdub percussion, speak the language of music is something you're going to want to figure out how to do. And then hunger, that hunger that drives you to success, that hunger that burns in your belly, that fire in your belly, surrounding, surround yourself with birds of a feather, people that have light, that are like-minded individuals that have similar goals. And in Nashville, 
everyone's chasing the dream. So anytime you're talking to, like I said, a bartender, a barista, a valet, you are talking to a creative, a creative that has a future in Nashville. And you find those other people that you resonate with and you can create teams. And that's what I did. I have a, I have a group that called the Three Kings and it's Kurt Tully and Tully, uh, Kurt uh, Allison and Tully Kennedy. And we've been playing music together for f over four presidencies. And um, because we are like-minded, we wanted um, we wanted to play music on a regular basis in Nashville, Tennessee, and we lifted each other up and we looked for opportunities for each other and we did it together. So don't, um, you know, don't forget about the, the possibility of, of, of creating a team. Teams are fantastic too, because it's a lonely world. Because most of the people in the music business, it's, it's like it's like a me against the world mentality, it's, and it's it's tough, you know. So whatever help you can get, and being around people that can lift you up, you could check in with them and, and say like, hey, it's almost like a mastermind. If you're a mastermind group, if you read the work of Napoleon Hill, check out the mastermind concept. Yeah. So if you do have a question, be sure to use the hashtag. Pick Rich's brain, no apostrophe. That's pick Rich's brain, no apostrophe. So I hope you enjoy this initial episode of Pick Rich's Brain. Thank you to Jim McCarthy, and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>